How you doing, fam bam? This is Chris Muso here. I have a important topic to talk to you guys about, especially if you built a PC or if you have a PC and you want to make sure that your PC is cooling properly. And one of the most easiest things to overlook and basic concepts to overlook is the PC fans. There is a lot to be said about it. There is a lot of misinformation or confusion when it comes to PC fans. And I'm here to dispel everything about it and make it a lot easier for you guys to understand exactly what a PC fan exactly does. So first of all, what is really the point of having PC fans and why do you really need it? As you know, your PC's components are inside of a PC case. That's no brainer, right? But because your PC components are inside of a case, just like if you're inside a room without AC, you're not gonna really cool properly. And because of that, a lot of your components, such as your motherboards, your graphics cards, your processors, your RAM, they can all easily overheat and can cause detrimental damage, especially if it's been sitting in the heat for so long. You're in a tropical area where PCs can receive a lot of heat. And because it does, that can cause the longevity for those PC components to not really last as long. For example, your motherboard might last only for two years compared to having it last for a good five or six years instead. So it is really critical and important that your PC does have the proper airflow. What are the differences between all the PC fans? So first off, I'm gonna go over with the DC and PWM fans. For example, right here in my hand, as you see, I have an ASUS Tough fan here. This came with my ASUS Tough GT501 case. And how do I know that? How do I know this is a DC fan? And I'll show you exactly how. You have three pins. So that tells you right off the bat that this is a DC fan and most Cases come with DC fans and it's very rare to actually receive fans that are PWM straight from the manufacturer. What does a DC fan do? It regulates the voltage that is received from your PC. For example, a DC fan could be running at 12 volts and it can also vary to eight or six volts or to whatever voltage that your PC can drop or go up down too and because of this your fan is technically always on it's always in work mode it's at 100 percent when it is at 12 volts and then it could drop down to six volts to where it kind of regulates down to a lower number or a lower percentage of usage and because of that sometimes it's very easy for the fan to kind of shut off because it's not really getting the full control of the voltage instead it's just going off of different levels dc fans are typically not as easy to control now the difference between a pwm fan it typically comes with a fourth pin corsair thermal take any of your other manufacturers like noctua they will have a fourth pin and the reason why that actually regulates the voltage to where it enters a duty cycle because as a duty cycle, your fan will be running and it will run more efficient because of that. These fans will 100% wear out way more quicker. So this fan could go out within a couple years just because it is a DC fan. Because the fan is working 100% of the time, that is not exactly a good thing. And the reason why it is not a great thing is because if the fan's running 100% of the time, and just like if you were running a marathon 100% of the time, you're gonna wear down way quicker instead of managing your stamina and running accordingly to try to win the marathon. Your fan will always be working and it will run into issues in the near futures. Typically when you do know of fan issues, you kind of will hear a rattle. Not sure if you're gonna really hear this on the mic, but I'll kind of have like a little shake from the hub. I had these fans for probably about a year or a year and a half before one of the fans decided to give out. DC fans typically do wear out quicker than PWM fans. Not saying that all DC fans are bad, but if you want to have something more reliable in your PC, and there's other variants that you also have to worry about when you do have PC fans, such as this, you might get confused. You might see these other things such as these. If you see these on a fan, that just means that they have a RGBs in them. Now that's not going to really pertain or affect the fans performance or build up any real heat 
because of the fan that's a whole different subject that if you're worried about rgb performance make sure you check the card right above as i will have a comparison video to show you how well a pc performs with rgbs on or with it out the rgb software what you're here for is that you want to know between cfm and say static pressure those are uh, very familiar terms that you probably ran into or if you're not really familiar with those terms it's good to understand what they are for cfm this has been around for the longest if you don't know it means that it is the airflow that travels through the fan so if your fan has about 40 or 60 CFM, the higher the better. Now, because it does have a higher airflow, doesn't always necessarily mean it is better, but it will be great if you're using it for the pool setup because it will be able to extract all the air and exhaust the air properly without issue. Where is the problem when it comes to CFM? Just because the fan is working really quick, say you have it at 100% at the time, and it's in front of your PC case, so you're thinking you're getting the greatest airflow. Now, not all PC cases are built the same. As you know, I have a Corsair 5000X, which is a glass case in front of it. It does have an obstacle for air to go through it, which the air has to go around the glass front of the panel. And because of that, it kind of chops up the air and the CFM wouldn't really run as efficient. And that is why they created something like static pressure. It is to be more efficient when it comes through obstacles or even better when it comes to liquid cooling. Because of static pressure, even though the CFM might not be as high, it might not be 40 CFM or 60 CFM or even 100 CFM, it might be running at say 28 or 30 CFM, you might see something like 1.78 millimeters of H2O. You might see 3.21 millimeters of H2O. And exactly what does that mean? It just practically means that the fan is being more efficient when it comes to static pressure. When the harder the obstacle is, the higher the number, that it is also better to cut around the obstacle. So technically it is better to have static pressure fans in the front, such as a Corsair case that is a 5000X compared to a 5000D, which might be better for CFM. So it is a good idea to understand exactly what kind of fans that you do have in your system, because if you want to properly cool it well, it is recommended to make sure that you have the best possible setup. The next topic here is I'm going to talk to you about the fan direction. When you look at fans, you might be confused exactly which side is which. You might not be too sure if this is going to be the intake or the exhaust side or the push or pull side, same as the back end. The easiest tip I can give you is most fans that you do have, you will know this side without any plastics in the back typically is the intake is usually right here on the back because you can see the back of the plastics and typically it will exhaust out because if you look in the front of the fan you could also see the direction of the fins and which way they go typically the air is going to go it's going to whirl inside through here so it will travel out now if you're not 100 sure or you want to make sure that the fan is 100% for that. Just take a look right here. And if you take a look right there, you will see the direction of which way the fan should be. So now you know the fan does exhaust out through this direction. That is direction of fan. And what is the best way to cool your PC without effing it up? Especially if you just built your PC, you definitely don't want stagnant air in your PC. And just imagine you're inside of a small room, just like in my studio here, you would get pretty pissed off that the fans are all facing out. Just imagine that, right? If all the fans are facing out, then where's the airflow coming in? And that's the exact problem when it comes to PCs. Just think of it just like that. You're trying to cool every component in there. That simple. It's not really too difficult. You're going to prefer the fans to face the components more, just like if you're trying to cool yourself off if you're in a tight or small room. It's better to have three fans blowing on you and have one fan blowing the hot air out instead of having all the fans trying to blow the hot air out. It sounds pretty ridiculous, but think of it just like that. So technically, you want your fans to have 
more push instead of pull. You want to have a three or four fans going through push and then have two fans going through the pull side. Basic idea of airflow, it just simply goes into the PC and out of the PC. You're trying to cool your most critical components that get extremely hot, such as your GPU or your CPU. That is very important to know. Fam bam, guys, I hope you found this content very useful. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you know anybody else out there who needs help to cool off their PCs, make sure you share this video with them. And also, if you're not part of the big, wonderful fam bam, make sure you go down and hit the subscribe button for more. And don't forget to hit the notification bell. And for all the newest updates, make sure you follow my Twitter handle right here, as it is the same as my TikTok and IG as well. So fam bam, guys, if you have any questions about PC fans or cooling off, off your PC components, let me know in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Chris Pizzo, signing out.